Hello, and welcome to What's Next Wall Street. I'm George Alfredis. Hold up, Dave. Hold up. You said we're going to wear ugly sweaters, right? This is yeah. like the ugliest sweater. If you're if you're this listening, is, yours is cool. No, he's you're wearing like if you're if you're listening to like the podcast. Hams and gingerbread man. Dave and, is wearing kind of a cool <laughs> shirt with a cool blazer, and you tell me to wear. Uh, look at you. You, you have did a me llama wrong. here. Stand up a little taller. There. You have double llamas with with hats on. You could yeah get over okay, close to me. There you go. Double llamas. But this is an ugly, you lied to me. But you have disco ball arms, which I really like and appreciate. Okay. Well, okay. speaking of uh, ugly, I'm Dave Matthews, and this is a show about stocks, crypto, and the new decentralized financial web through the world around us. I was talking ugly with my shirt. Yes, not with my obviously face. not with your face. Hello. Yeah, exactly. I've got details on all the hot new trending products that everybody's talking about using and investing in. And today, we are asking the question. Who's got next? Where can you get the most return on your investment fast? I think I know. Let's see if you guys agree. Plus, we got to talk about all this crypto craziness. Well, considering my stock market balances this year versus last year, I want to know those tips, Georgia. Okay. I'm going to talk about the AI revelation and revolution that's happening for photos and chatbots. Yes. The Technorati, the digital advanced on the Technorati, internet. Technorati, I They're like going that. crazy over this stuff. But you may want to wait, and I'll really? tell you why. Because I want it looks so cool. All right, we've got Greg Krause, lead instructor at OptionsLawyers.com, as our expert. What Greg does is chart a lot of these companies, and those chart indicators can show where a particular stock is headed so that it's easier to target investment potential. So Greg kind of combines technical analysis with fundamental knowledge. Our goal in all this is to provide you with education, information, and tips to help you become a more informed trader with a tailored trade plan so that you can stay up to speed with what's next on Wall Street and stack some money gains. That's right. You can email us at optionsplayers.com or hit us up on social media at what's next Wall Street with your questions. We can also direct you to instructors and experts over at optionsplayers.com like Greg who dig into trading fundamentals. Now you can watch what we're talking about at the Options Players YouTube channel or listen to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yes. Now, whether you're listening to the podcast or you're watching our cute little Christmas stuff, we've got our cute little Christmas stuff, make sure you subscribe and hit that alert button so that you always know what's next on Wall Street. And if you like it and what's not to like, it's Christmas time. Give us five stars. Five. So this FTX fiasco is turning into a messy TV. I'm like, oh, did you see these fools? Did you see what they said? Okay, so it's honestly so much better than any reality show right now. So let's just get into it, all right? Uh, disgraced crypto king Sam Bankman Freed better enjoy the Bahamas while he can. Although, granted, he's probably not having much fun. He is still in the Bahamas, but palm trees hit different when you're looking at them from behind That's bars, funny. right? <laughs> and I'm not talking about bars that serve pina coladas. Oh. Bankman faces 115 years in prison if he's convicted on all counts. That's legit. Yeah, prosecutors say the former CEO of FTX, along with his partners, have stolen billions of dollars from customers since 2019, right up until the company collapsed. But this dude just seems so unbothered. He was literally playing story back, storybook brawl while conducting interviews hours before his arrest. And somebody was like, you better, not, you better not be playing storybook brawl. And he was like, yeah, I'm doing it. Y'all, he literally had a text thread called wire fraud. I mean, what? <laughs> well, George, do you think that's bad? This guy's team was using emojis for expense reimbursement and QuickBooks to handle his multi-billion dollar company's finances. Crazy. He faces eight charges including conspiracy to commit wire fraud on customers and conspiracy to commit money laundering. The U.S. is moving to get him extradited, but Bankman Freed said he may try and fight it. Also, if you had an FTX account, to which I say I'm sorry, Hello. you may have contributed to a campaign that you had no idea about. See, Bankman Fraud, as I'm yeah, calling I like him, that. was donating tens of millions of dollars to political campaigns, including President Biden's 2020 run, and that money actually belonged to customers. Wow. He didn't just give to Biden, though. The U.S. attorney, Damian Williams, says that Bankman Frey donated so he could buy bipartisan influence and impact the direction of public policy. Oh, so he was buying bipartisan. Okay, I get it. All right. <laughs> well, obviously that backfired. I guess hmm. he tried play, paying the piper on both ends of the political spectrum to delay maybe investigations. I don't know. Wow. Does that ever work? Hasn't any time. It hasn't lately here. So crypto exchange 
uh, crypto exchanges actually are under even more intense scrutiny now. Thanks, FTX. Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, recently saw nearly two billion dollars in withdrawals over a 24-hour period. Binance also temporarily paused withdrawals of its USDC stablecoin. Um, a Nansen spokesperson said, Binance's withdrawals are increasingly are increasing due to the growing uncertainty about its reserves report, which is not great. Binance's CEO, however, tweeted the withdrawals were business as usual. People always withdraw like two billion bucks. What are you talking about? We always do that. Meanwhile, Bitcoin, Doge, and Ethereum are up well, when they were up last time I checked, are they still up? Um, they're not. They're down now. Well, the last time I checked, I was like, why is this happening? Why are they up? But now they're down. So never mind. Maybe it's a good time to buy right before Christmas. You've probably got some extra spending money. In oh, it. that's all I got. <laughs> hey, a federal judge is dismissing an investor's lawsuit targeting Ethereum Max and Emacs endorsements, including Kim Kardashian, Georgia, yes. your favorite, Shame and Floyd that. Merriweather Jr., hmm. the kid, I don't know him. Um, the judge tossed the proposed class action lawsuit. He's saying investors who bought Emacs tokens claim they suffered losses after taking the celebrity's word about the value of the currency. Oh, oh that's wow. Kim's real, real butt, too. And her lips. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the judge said law expects investors to act reasonably before biasing their bets on the trends of the moment. Right. And guess what? These are huge bets on a new thing that doesn't relate to any other thing. Right. At least with Amway and Avon, you got toilet paper or face cream <laughs> delivered yes. with those multi-level marketing schemes. Yeah, you actually had something in your hand. I can't believe people <laughs> were like, oh, you it's right, Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather? Well, then I got to buy it. Like, are you serious? Not that I don't, I'm not shading them, but they're influencers. Okay. Meanwhile, eight influencers, speaking of, are accused of using social media to manipulate the price of stocks. <gasps> what? Can you believe <laughs> the SEC alleges these influencers use Twitter and Discord to promote certain stocks to their hundreds of thousands of followers. Now, the agency says the defendants then regularly sold their shares without even or, even or ever having disclosed their plans to dump the securities. All eight are facing federal criminal fraud charges. Now, hundreds of thousands of followers, psh, you got to be on Kim Kardashian's level to get away with that, you dummies. What's wrong with them? <laughs> well, that's not surprising. A new poll found that Americans believe investing in digital currency is highly risky. You think? And we need a poll for that? <laughs> Who'd they call, by the way? Maybe they just watched our show. <laughs> hey, Web3 is going just great. Yeah. Furthermore, around 38% of Gen Zers and 46% of millennials think cryptocurrency is highly risky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those numbers skyrocketed to 60% for us Gen Xers okay. and 80% for our parents, the baby boomers. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay. We said we were going to need an Elon segment, right, on the show since he's always in the news. But now it seems we need a crypto segment or maybe a Twitter segment. So, yeah, basically back to Elon. So this is the funniest thing ever to me, okay? It's the story about one of the richest men in the world not being able to pay his rent, Right. Bone Thugs and Harmony said it best. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month. Do you remember that song? Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I didn't know okay. it was about first paying rent. Pay rent. Okay. <laughs> Twitter apparently hasn't paid its rent in San Francisco or any of its global offices for weeks and is putting office supplies up for auction as it struggles to get its financial house in order. So what do they got? Yeah, copy paper? Cop yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Maybe Staples? A stapler? <laughs> Swing line. <laughs> right. So reports are that Musk and his advisors are hoping to re renegotiate lease terms since Twitter has a much smaller workforce after Elon Musk fired thousands of employees and a lot of others quit. So he admitted, Elon, last month that Twitter had seen a massive drop in revenue since he took over the company in late October. Here's an idea. Let people work from home, you smart dummy, and you don't need rent. But he forced everyone to come back. Hey, maybe this will help. Elon sold 22 million shares, equaling $3.6 billion in Tesla on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week when we tape the show. Huh. Wait, maybe he needed to buy things for Christmas or just save Twitter. <laughs> he sold these shares just as the latest Tesla update for high-end 2022 Model S and X vehicles they can now play thousands of games via the stream online service. Crazy. Oh, and stream Apple Music and support for Zoom video calls. Do people even use Zoom? I've moved on to Hangouts and Teams. And but wait, stop, stop, stop. Okay, so I, I need to know something. Who is doing Zoom while they're driving? Who is, I see this video behind us. 
Who is it? I know that they're self-driving cars, but who is doing that while they're driving? That's, okay, that's a good point. Let's dive into this. Yeah, a bit I need more. more. So the computers inside the Tesla have massive processing and 16 gig of RAM. They're essentially what a gaming system would be just for self-driving. But as you learned on this show on prior episodes, full self-driving, that ain't happening. Exactly. It's not working. So essentially, Elon and his teams, they added Netflix support, they added Spotify. They're letting the in-car computer do a lot of cool stuff. And one of these things they just added is using the steering wheel, Georgia, while you're not driving, but while you're parked, to be a video game controller for games. And Stream is a streaming subscription network for games. And there's thousands of titles on this platform, which you can play using the steering wheel when you're not driving. But that's today. Maybe in 2024 or 25, when Elon gets full self-driving working, Maybe then the steering wheel will be disconnected from the motor controller and you'll be able to use that same steering wheel while the car is taking you somewhere to play those video games. But in the meantime, these computers are fast enough for them to play the games. All right. I guess. That's a reach, I guess. Okay. Well, you know, Twitter has also, speaking of reaches, relaunched their subscription service for a little extra revenue. Now, Twitter Blue will allow users to edit tweets, upload high-quality videos, and users' accounts will receive a blue checkmark symbol right so next important. to the name. So Twitter Blue was originally rolled out in early November, but it was paused after users began impersonating brands and famous people. Now, a revamped version will be available at $11 a month for iOS users and $8 a month for everyone else. Hmm. Now, Twitter hasn't exactly explained why users will be charged more, but we can assume that it's to offset fees from the Apple App Store. Mm. Musk says that the software update will show if your true account status is. So, you know, clearly also if you've been shadow banned. Okay. The reason why and how to appeal it. Now, the term shadow ban relies, refers rather to blacklisting an account without the user's knowledge. Mm. Now, not sure if this is the best time for Twitter to start disbanding its trust and safety council, though. The council was made up of external expert organizations that handled issues, including online safety human and digital rights, suicide mm. prevention, mental health, child sexual exploitation, and dehumanization. Mm. And it's also reportedly being used for the account that follows rich folks' private jets, like the now suspended Elon Jet, which we talked about yeah. on a prior show, yeah. which Musk said he would never suspend, and ones also that poked at Taylor Swift's jet because of its massive greenhouse gas emissions due to all the light, the flights that it made. Yeah. Hey, Georgia. All I want for, for Christmas. Christmas. No, 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 wait. I want a Taylor Swift breakup song. Come on, no, man. No, not for us. A song for her and I. Oh, my God. Taylor, let's get with it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, enough about Taylor and Twitter. Let's talk TikTok, so the three Ts. Uh, Republican state leaders are asking Apple and Google to raise their age ratings for TikTok. 15 state attorneys generals uh, sent letters to CEOs of both companies saying the app contains mature content and that the teen or 12 plus rating is too low because this app promotes drugs and alcohol use, glorifies eating disorders and encourages illegal and dangerous challenges. I agree. I agree with that. I would never let my eight year old have TikTok or any other app for that matter. Sometimes stuff just pops up on my TikTok feed and I have to quickly get it off because it's too much for my tender eyes and ears, much less my kids. Wow. Hey, Georgia, did you see this? What? Hedge fund billionaire Ken Griffin is suing the IRS and the Treasury Department for what he calls unlawful disclosure of his tax information. Sound familiar? The mm -hmm. suit is more fuel on the fire over leaked tax filings for super wealthy people including Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos. Griffin's suit stems from his in inclusion in a 2021 ProPublica series examining the taxes paid by top billionaires like Elon Musk and Carl Icahn. Hmm. Some of those mentioned in this series paid no federal income taxes in some years. Wow. ProPublica used tax information provided by an anonymous source. Hey, speaking of taxes, it's going to get really interesting now that Trump's taxes are in the hands of the Senate and he's announced that he's running for president again. Did you know that he was the only leader who never disclosed his tax history? Yes, I did. <laughs> Probably because the New York Times found that he did not pay any in 10 of 15 years Insane. of taxes that they Insane. uncovered. Now, things could get interesting in the next few weeks before Republicans take control of the House in January. Insane. 
IRS, you better not ever come for me again. While these billionaires are out here complaining because we found out and they don't pay taxes. Boo-hoo. Now everybody knows what we already knew. Billionaires get billions of breaks when it comes to taxes due to legal loopholes. Can I just know about the loopholes? That's all. Can a hundred air get some loopholes? But I digress. So while Richie Rich is over there crying, poor me, the rest of the world is taking 401k hardship withdrawals. Uh, reports are that half of 1% of people who have 401ks took hardship distribution in October. Well, now that number seems low. It seems small, but it's the largest share on record in almost 20 years. And you know, I looked it up and I was like, what exactly is a hardship 401k? What can you get it for? And I was like, hmm, I'm about to take one of these. Does that mean you can take money out without, you can take money out without, without fines? Yes, because like if you have some kind of medical issue, your kid going to college, babe, we don't have to use that money. We got money for college now. Um, but, you know, then when you get ready to retire, you're screwed. So there's that. Today's pro tip is brought to you by optionsplayers.com. Now when trading options, there are a lot of variables to understand, but the very first one is implied volatility. Okay. Now make sure you're aware of what IV is and what it means to your trading plan and target. When you neglect to consider IV and blindly buy an option, you may experience a loss while the particular underlying is moving in your favor. This is all due to the volatility and premium, so make sure you understand and plan with this in mind. We hope this helps you stack more gains. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. What? <laughs> LinkedIn is the largest professional network of over 810 million people, and it's incredibly easy to use. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your own LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people to hire. That's right. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus its leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know, Georgia, every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Wow. Okay, so post your job for free at linkedin.com slash WNWS. That's linkedin.com slash WNWS to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. Okay, y'all, this is the part of the show where we get to hear from you. You can always hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street. Comment on our YouTube page or email us at www.optionsplayers.com. This first email is from Jimmy in Austin. Jimmy, I love the Lion Hotel. Have you ever been to the Lion in Austin? No. Is it's that right. That resident, not residential. Is that that uh, place you guys. We always say. We resort. always say. It's, it's a resort. It's not really a resort, but it's right next to Bad Bridge. Although every time we stay there, we, no, Bad Bridge is like. Gazillion bat, gazillion bats come out. Yeah, with yeah. No, they. You, so we stay at this hotel strictly so that we can see the bats. Never oh. seen the bats, but oh they God. have really yummy <laughs> breakfast bread pudding. So sorry. Anyway, hey Jimmy. So Jimmy writes: Does Greg think there's a lot of money on the sidelines waiting to get back in the market? If so, what's his guess on what they need to see before jumping in? Greg, who is this they? By the way, I guess um, they might be. Us, um, the retail individuals wanting to put money back into the market, uh, you have firms. I mean, firms don't let just cash sit there, okay? So it's in some form of investment because right now we're still sitting at about seven something percent uh, inflation, right? So if you're just holding cash, you're losing 7%. So you should just put it in something and earn money. Um, and we really haven't seen that go into uh, bonds or anything dramatically, but I think we will see that. Uh, very shortly um, with the inverted yield pretty bad. Uh, do I think there's a lot of money waiting to go in the market? No, I don't. Um, I, I, I just think that I, I wouldn't say that the market is down right now. I think we were probably a little bit over, uh, a little bit greedy uh, previously. I think the market's pretty fair right now. And if you don't think the market can go down, um, 
spy can drop and put a two in front of it very quickly. And it just went from 410 today, or maybe it was yesterday, all the way down to like 380 something today currently. And it can lose that 80 quite regularly. If you go look at a trend line, I'm sorry, I don't have uh, up because of internet issues here, but um, if you put a trend line on top of SPY's chart going back to January till today, uh, just connect the dots. It doesn't take a brainiac there. Uh, and then uh, copy that and make it a parallel line on the bottom or do the same thing on the bottom. You'll see if we just continue this current up-down trend we're on, uh, SPY is on a trajectory to get to the low threes. Um, and that's without going into a recession or anything. Um, so as we get a little bit stagnant here in the economy with raising rates and everything, um, you might see a little bit of fear going into that. Uh, okay. But I don't think there's a lot of money waiting to get back in the market. Um, uh, you see, I think when crypto starts to recover, that's showing that we have a little bit of extra funds to go places. Um, when, when's that but, exactly going to happen, yeah. Greg? There's a Can lot get of asking yeah. PTA. <laughs> Uh, so for me, crypto, I mean, you got to think, I, I mean, I was on an analyst team that shorted the crap out of crypto last year due to inflation. Everybody thought crypto would be this big inflation proof thing. We're just sitting here laughing at people like, no, every way it's not. It can't be. Just because something has a limited amount doesn't mean anything, especially when you could just make a new crypto, right? But, uh, it, you know, as gas prices go up, it costs more to mine it. Therefore, you have to sell more of your crypto to a pay for it. So that is just 101 economics. And I can't believe all these economists keep saying this stuff about inflation, but jokes on them because, you know, uh, the banks that we work for made a lot of money shorting it. Um, and those banks are not really holding those shorts anymore. They're getting out of them. Uh, and, you know, they're not shorts like you would short stocks. They are through other banks and things like that. Uh, I think banks will, and I think banks are trying to buy up Crypto, if that's what we're talking about. I think they're buying up crypto and firms are buying up crypto. And then once they get a large enough established amount, they're going to force the United States to regulate crypto. Okay. And when it becomes regulated, because it's already, it's not, I mean, everybody goes, oh, it's peer to peer and it's decentralized. No, it's not. 99% of it is centralized as crap through an exchange, right? So with regulation, that's going to put, not as much fear. And at that point, then you could start getting these hedge funds and everybody else can then start putting big boy money into crypto and it could go crazy. I just don't know when that's going to happen. So when it gets federally regulated, I think you will see money flow into crypto uh, when the money's on the sideline. I buy um, that. And you know, that being said, it's a good time to buy it because it's been down for its highs were what, October, November last yeah. year. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's crypto is very volatile, so you could buy it and you can go to let's say Bitcoin could go all the way to eight thousand. I mean, it could happen, but then on the other hand, it could sounds of regulation come out and go to thirty tomorrow. So you just have to understand that you know don't don't mortgage your house to buy exactly. crypto. You know what I'm saying? Just be smart about it. You don't have to go out there and sell the farm to try to make some money. It's an investment. Plan on holding it, and then I think it, it will do fine. I'm not a super crypto guy in any ways. I look at it from an, uh, a strictly supply and demand um, feature. That's all I do. Uh, try to guess human behavior, I guess you can say, is kind of my role. Uh, and then on the same side with the money, I don't know where all this money's coming from because the government's pulling back on it. Um, so with that being said, and the Fed not purchasing uh, any more, you know, because what the Fed does is they have all this stuff on their balance sheet. They don't sell it. They just... After the year, those uh, bonds, uh, they hit their maturity rate and they go away and they don't spend the money that they got back from those on more. Um, so as we're doing that over and over and over, um, that's kind of what's slowing it down. And it's raising the cost of capital for businesses also um, with this higher interest rate, which slows down growth, of course, because they're not making as much money. Um, so and that's everybody cries about this inflation thing. But you, you have to understand this is one reason why. We, we, it, it's, it's weird to me that raising rates stops, uh, it doesn't really stop inflation. It, it, it curves employment and jobs and things like that and some growth. But then on the other hand, it makes cost, it, the cost of capital, which is huge, is what we all look for, your weighted average cost of capital in a company when we're doing evaluations. And if that's higher, then to maintain the same margin, a company has to raise 
it's prices. Um, and they do do that. Um, so uh, some of the companies had almost very cheap 2%. So bonds being sold a couple years ago, and now that's not, you're not getting that. So uh, it, I think that's awesome. It's just this weird thing. Well, I don't really, I can't really Greg. place it's, it. You know, you've got the Fed raising interest rates. You've got corporations that are trying to uh, keep the balance sheets high. So they're laying people off and it's a teeter totter. I don't want to be on. So let's go to the next question. <laughs> Next yeah. email comes to us from the Options Players site chat. Thank you, Jason, for being a member there. Jason asks, why is China hoarding metals? And is that something we should be hoarding as well? So, Jason, don't hoard metals, especially heavy ones. Those right. uh, tend to... How do you carry them? To, to, yeah, they're A, heavy, but they're also <laughs> yeah. maybe carciner carcinogenous. Is that the word I'm looking for? Cancerous. Uh, some, yeah, some mercury or something's good for you. But... Um, yeah, I mean, let's really dis discuss why nations hoard items in general. Um, so why is, what does China do? They, they're a manufacturing nation. That's what they do. They produce stuff. So what does China need to do that? Steel, you know, Rare gold, earth metals. Silver. You know, they, they yeah. bought a lot they, of Africa just for access they, to these minerals. They've been buying our junk from junkyards, shipping them over on large boats that probably cost, I don't know how many millions just to ship it back over to China and just storing it for decades. It's nothing new. Um, so it's really just a way to kind of control the price. The same way we do it with petroleum and medical supplies and other materials. The United States stockpiles though, those. So if it becomes an issue where there's a, you know, let's just say COVID or something like that, and there's not enough out on the normal market, the government can then provide that to keep the job and the economy stable, right? Okay. So don't think it's um, China's hoarding metals to, you know, hoard metals. It's what they are. The United States is a petroleum country. They, we need petroleum for everything, you know. Nobody has the amount of cars we have per person. It's absolutely crazy, right? So we need petroleum for everything. Um, so should we be hoarding metals? I think there are some metals we should probably be looking at hoarding, but we're not a really big production company, right? Or our country. We don't, we're not producing jack anymore. Most of our GDP is coming from real estate and finance. You know, uh, I know it's not, that's not, all the way true, but that's really why housing is so big all around because without housing and all the services around housing, um, our GDP is not very good. Right? Yeah, so Jason, um, if you want to hoard metals, I think lithium right now is something to look into because all the electric car manufacturers need it. Um, yeah, but I don't know if you're going to be really hoarding that because it's well, maybe you could hoard it in the stock. You know market. what I'm saying? It's in a demand and there's no, there's no used lithium, um, yeah, I don't think lithium is a long-term uh, uh, item to be really. Yeah, but batteries still in need anyways, it. We but... don't. We don't have like super. There's nothing other than lithium that has the power density and weight density that you know. There's no breakthroughs in battery technology, though, right, Greg? Yeah, there, I mean, there's not until you do it. One of the best. I mean, we can't use this for cars or anything, but one of the best stores of energy on the planet is sand. Yeah. By the way. And no, we don't use it, but you know uh, that can really change a lot of things. If you if you just knew, oh, I can store power <laughs> in the sand. Okay, uh, that's something new I didn't know. I just learned yeah, something on what's so it's via, it's via heat. They're they're called sand banks, and you know it's pretty far out there, but it requires a lot of it, and you need something like the desert to heat it up. I don't like the yeah. way the teleprompter guy is looking at me like, oh, you didn't know that. Everybody knows that. <laughs> hey, you know what? You learn something new on What's Next Wall Street every single day. And if you have a question, we can probably answer it. And you might learn something just like I did. Or we might find someone who can answer your questions. So hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street in mm -hmm. the comments section on our YouTube page or email us at www.optionsplayers.com with your questions. Thanks, Greg. As more and more people turn to social media and online platforms to connect with friends and share their lives, the importance of a good profile picture has increased. Many people want to make sure their profile picture accurately represents them and captures their best side. Okay. To help with this, some people are now using artificial intelligence or AI engines to automatically modify and improve their profile pictures. 
These AI engines use algorithms and machine learning to analyze a person's face and make suggestions for improving the photo. Ah. For example, the AI engine might automatically smooth out skin, brighten eyes, or just the lighting of the photo to make the person look their best. Okay. One popular tool for doing this is a smartphone app called FaceApp, which uses AI to automatically edit people's photos. The app has become very popular with millions of people using it to improve their profile pictures on social media. Okay. So the use of AI to modify profile pictures is not without controversy, however. Some people have raised concern about the potential for AI to create unrealistic beauty standards and promote unhealthy body image. Sure. Additionally, there are concerns about privacy and the use of personal data by these AI engines. Overall, though, the use of AI to modify profile pictures is a growing trend, and it remains to be seen how it will develop and whether it will become more widespread. So I'll tell you something, Dave. When I look at people's pictures and I see them in person, because, you know, I did a little bit of acting, a little modeling, and so sometimes directors are like, and we want to see your, your um, social media page. Well, my social media page is filled with just like me and my family and my kids. It's real. Like it's me with no makeup. It's me doing dumb stuff. It's not like me being like an actress. But I look at other actors and I'm like, how do they, this is not how they look. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. What, what's the app? Tell me what the app is. Yeah. I want to know what the app is. Well, worse. This is going to totally freak you out because that sounded like something I wrote, right? Yeah. I didn't write that. You lion sack of crap. I used another AI service called JatGPT, and I asked the question, why are people using AI to generate profile photos? Shut the freaking door. Yep. You see, the last two weeks, both Linza and the one that I used, Vanna.com, have seen their number of users blow up. The process is simple. You upload eight or more image of yourself, and a few hours later, you get a bunch of crazy, crazy photos back of a digital you in different scenarios. Okay. What's interesting to me is all these AI engines, whether it was the chat one I used or the photos, they've learned from other artists and writers about how to depict the image of you. And some of those depictions actually have signatures along the borders, huh? you know, where an artist would actually endorse their work. Yeah. Those are showing up in the AI, which uh -uh. they're scribbles, but it blows my mind. Now the caveat here is the artists are the inspirations for this computer's work and they're not getting paid. Mm. Well, maybe because they're long gone, uh, despite groups like Linza having 25 million downloads and making 8 million in revenue from December alone. Jeez. Now, these guys aren't making their first run at this. A couple years ago, their engine Prisma was used to make brushstroke paintings of your photos. Now, that didn't resonate as much as the current AI-generated scenes and wardrobes are, though, today. Maybe it's because some of them are so outlandish. So, Georgia, and those of you at home, these are cool services, but read the fine print. Okay. You want to use a service that doesn't take your photos and have the rights to own or repost them. You want to keep your own rights to your own likeness. And there are plenty of other sites out there like Vanna.com, which are free, as well as state that they won't share your likeness. Now, like I've said before, if a product is free, then you're the product. But for now, enjoy these scenes as they try and build users for these apps and get acquired by Adobe or whoever wants, you know, else wants their uh, target for their technology for these startups. Right. Now, I'm looking forward to this AI generation growing. And do you remember the old Clippy from Microsoft? No. He'd pop up when you were writing a document and his recommendations sucked. So <laughs> as you could see by the intro of this segment, which was completely written by an AI. Unbelievable. The improvements can only go up. Can there. I use that to write my entertainment reports for my... <laughs> For my show and this is insane. Let's talk about that offline. I'll okay. teach you that. Thank you. All right, so it's the holidays. It's Christmas and we're on these streets, right? Okay, even a triple dimmick cannot stop us now. My in-laws are here. They're in town for the holidays and they say the airport was crazy crowded. Uh, Dave can't stay off a plane, but you don't really count. Okay, you just don't count. AAA says about 113 million people will be traveling th this holiday season. That number covers folks who are going 50 or more miles away from home between December 23rd and January 2nd. So that's almost back to pre-pandemic numbers. Experts say the vast majority of those who are traveling will do so by car. However, Delta Airlines is like, hold up. Delta is bullish as it looks ahead to the next year, forecasting a revenue increase of up to 20% and also calling air travel demand robust. Um, and United Airlines, you saw this, we were talking about this earlier, uh, they must be expecting more international flights from Dave alone because <laughs> they plan to buy 100 Boeing 787 Dreamliners with options to buy 100 more. That is, by the way, 
the biggest order ever for a U.S. carrier. United says the $30 billion order will replace planes that are coming due for retirement and expand the airline's global reach. Now, I haven't decided if we're going to make it a road trip or take a flight, but I am definitely trying to take my boys to visit the Mushroom Kingdom in California. What? No. Oh. Not those kind of mushrooms. Okay. I'm talking about Super Nintendo World, okay, <laughs> which opens at Universal Studios Hollywood in February. Now, we have already booked flights for a ski trip, and usually we wait till the very last minute. So I guess we're kind of on trend to, um, to travel like everybody else, but we got to pay for these trips, Greg. So with that said... Who's got next? Is the travel sector where it is? Where can I get the most return and quick? Well, in the in the travel section, I mean, we can go out and you can look at some uh, ETFs to kind of see where they're at. They're, you know, they're pretty down. If you go to Jets and things like that, it's down. I'm not a, a huge trader in Jets. I am, or, and I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, it's down. So, I mean, you're probably not too happy. No. Uh, I mean, But is this time for me to get the, Jets? Is it time for me to buy Jets? Uh, okay, so go to so we have to look at this, and when I look at what's in jets, it's normally larger, almost global travel industry stocks, right? Um, so your deltas, your you know all those, and then you're like say Disneyland things like that. Well, when we go into a um, a recession, okay, uh, that limits. We stop looking for travel that requires vacation and we do more staycations, right? Yeah. So, for example, instead of taking your kids to um, Disneyland, you're just going to take them to Six Flags over Dallas or whatever it is, right? right? Um, so, that's kind of the issue. Now, you, of course, have like a million things there in Texas, but, you know, here, instead of driving the four hours to get to Dallas, um, you know, we might just, you know, go down to the lake and like fish or something. I don't know. We ain't got much to do around here. But uh, yeah, so I'm not positive on travel in 2023 in any way. But and, Greg, don't you goes, think people want to, don't you think people are dying to get out because they've been stuck I, in the house and they're just now kind of, you know, Christmas will be over and we'll yeah, be off that Christmas we go time ready to, to go. Uh, laying individuals off. Now, this is not. I don't think la these big layoffs we see is a labor thing in general. I think it's based more in the tech industry and it's just one off there. Everyone else really isn't trying to lay people off. They're trying to hold on to many people. But with that, when you're cutting back and, and the economy is pulling back, um, they're, one of the largest expenses besides labor or being it is all this travel and recruitment, right? So they're probably not out there hiring just all over the nation, paying all these jet centers to fly here and here to recruit people. You know, it's so I, I, I don't see how it would go up. And then really, I don't like airlines ever. Airlines are doomed to fail. They have deals with the government, right? So the government says, hey, you got to fly here to there. and We'll subsidize you, so on and so on. And once again, you know how I feel about the government. Anything that the government's into fails miserably. And that's every airline. So, I mean, but Jimmy Carter so, deregulated the airline industry in 1977, Greg. Are you, that's why they still are have to take orders and still have to fly into certain states. You get what I'm saying? They have to. Oh yeah. Because there's no way they would fly to Alexandria, Louisiana if they didn't have to. There's it's not making money. They make their money when that plane lands in Dallas and then flies from Dallas to somewhere else. Yep. You know, so to to make everything you know, work, they're required to do that. Uh, so um, it, it's a little bit of uh, craziness here and there. Uh, now, I might look at hotels, maybe cruises. Um, mm. And what I mean is your hotels need staycations, need hotels. Cruises are always a cheap thing, and they got destroyed because, I mean, they're nothing but Petri dishes, right? Well, hello. <laughs> so, Never get no one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're looking at someone in a recession that, you know, and you're trying to have a good uh, 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 a vacation, it might be in the cruise. So maybe looking at uh, like the Defiance Hotel and Cruise ETF that also has a little bit of airlines in it. I think it's CCL might be a, 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 the, the thing that might work out a little bit better. But see, um, and then there's some other ones never... that have Boeing, American Express and Walt Disney. It's just Everyone has something in it that I don't really like, and that's the problem. 
Greg, I just don't think people, I just think when I think cruises, I think people think, wow, if there's a pandemic, if there's the flu, if there's, you know, some issue, then I can't get, you know, I'm surrounded I by I just it. don't want to be on a boat with like a thousand Me people. Me either. I don't even My like parents just did one with like a couple thousand people on it. They loved it. They Yeah, but yeah. my <laughs> in-laws love it. My mom loves it. But I'm like, no, get yeah. me on some land so I can just drive and get to where I want to get to. For me, yes. the allure of a cruise is you unpack once and you get to see a lot of cities. So the fact that you have to pack and then go drop by train and then unpack in another hotel is a pain in the ass compared to a cruise. Yeah. I much rather go to Europe and just hop on like an S train and just oh, yeah. take those mountains. what's up. Yeah, I'll do that. And then go from I've town only done to it three town. times you know this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we want to thank lead instructor at Options <laughs> Players, Greg Kraus, for being here with us today. Hey, Greg, the new Teslas have a built-in Zoom, so you might want to think about Oh, are you serious? Yep, they, they just announced that it. That is amazing. That's amazing. Okay, Zero so charging stations within 50 miles of my house. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. That's Sorry. Okay, remember, <laughs> if you've got questions, we can try to help you answer them. And we'd love to hear from you. So do us a favor. Email us at wnwadoptionsplayers.com or hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street, of course. You can watch episodes of us, except for Greg, this week. Um, but you'll actually want to watch this week's episode with Greg. Virtual Greg. Um, you can watch on our YouTube page at Options Players or listen to us on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts, which is probably what you're doing right now. Right. Hit the subscribe button, hit that alert button so you get current training info as soon as it drops. I'm Dave Matthews. And I'm Georgia Alfreda's. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Foy Wicklach. No legs shown to do it. Joe Noel. Kujul. Buon Natale. Feliz Navidad y prospero año hasta oh, en 2023. Ah, adiós. <laughs>